Good morning. Welcome again to another Trip Scott webcast. I'm Ed Poswoli, president of Trip Scott, and today we're uh, joined by Commissioner Chip Lamarca. Chip, welcome. Ed, thanks for having me. Let's talk a little about economic development. What's going on in the county? Uh, well, a lot, of, a lot of good projects going on. We uh, we did a public-private partnership at uh, Port Everglades uh, for a rail facility that FEC, Florida East Coast Railroad, uh, backed up by uh, loans from the uh, Florida Department of Transportation and uh, our, our input in the three-way project was to put up the 40 acres of land. And what we're building is a intermodal container transfer facility, which will uh, have the ability. Intermodal transit, what does that mean? Intermodal container transfer facility. Oh, we'll be able at to the get port. We, at the okay. port, correct. We'll be able to get the, the, uh, the uh, containers right off the ships, put them on rail, and build as, as big as a two mile long train without, without impending traffic, impeding traffic anywhere. Miami-Dade can't do that, and Palm Beach can't do that. So it's gonna really set us above uh, in the areas of getting cargo from the port onto the rail up to the uh, Midwest states and up through the East Coast. So it helps the port. It's going to be fantastic. And drives and drives commerce into the port. It, it will. Actually, the, the, the pre predecessor, the precursor to the construction project, was Governor Scott came down uh, for a groundbreaking breaking last year, and Eller Drive will be elevated so the train can go under that. So you won't actually have any, uh, any contact with, uh, with uh, automobile crossings until you get uh, well out of the area of downtown, which is going to be great. You know, we used to have that problem down at... Uh, Andrews Avenue or yep. and, yeah. uh, State Road 84, we stop traffic for uh, 20, 30 minutes. So that won't happen anymore. Well, that's good news. That's good news. What other economic development going on in the county? Because well, that seems to be the big concern. It is. It is. You know, we need we need to continue to, to uh, you know, we're, Broward County, uh, ironically, is is uh, is looking at some of the lowest unemployment in the area. Certainly lower than Miami Dade and Palm Beach, uh, which says we're moving in the right direction. But we're we've got to continue in that direction. Uh, one of the projects that uh, that I'd like to see happening uh, be brought before us again is the Convention Center Hotel. Um, Talked to quite a bit of our constituents. You know, my district runs from Boca Deerfield line, you know, the county line, all the way down to Port Everglades on the beach. And 61% of the uh, CBB dollars, the bed tax dollars, are collected in that district. And one of the things that that uh, I, I saw as a as a big problem is we're losing Convention Center business. To give you some numbers, I mean, in the last few years, 61 million in 2006. 47 and it was in 2007, 43, 54, and then 33 million in uh, 2010. That's lost business. So we need to keep that here. And uh, the way to do that would be to be creative with our convention center hotel project that's been up and down numerous times before me. Uh, but I believe strongly, like the intermodal project we just talked about, we can bring a uh, hotelier in and uh, po possibly propose uh, supplying the land and do a private, uh, public private partnership, which you know, it's, it's the only way we're going to get somebody in here. I don't think the taxpayers want to build a hotel, but I think there's a, there's a desire to have that business here. Well, how are we spending that, uh, that convention, the money anyway, on the tax? Uh, that tax? It, it goes uh, for marketing and, and, uh, and advertising, you know, m middle of Times Square in the, in the middle of uh, the dead of winter, we're, we're advertising our, our beaches, which is great. But uh, mostly advertising and marketing and also a large part of that is going to be the, uh, the money put up front to uh, fund our, our uh, beach renourishment project, which is also going on. And, this, and the expansion that you talk of, where would that take place? Uh, the expansion Around, on, on, on the, the building. convention center itself. Correct. It would purposes actually, of exhibits and, and meeting rooms and, and more. We, we need to be, uh, we're at about 600,000 <clears throat> square feet. We need to be at about 900,000 uh, to a million. That's what you know, larger convention centers are. So, that, so that would allow us to draw, get back the business, some correct. of the business we lost. Correct. All right. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the economics uh, in Broward. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a Forbes article that ranked uh, Broward County pretty low on well, places one, to do business. 192. How do we turn that around? Well, you know, no, no offense to the fine people of Detroit and Flint, Michigan, but uh, I don't want to be down at that part of the part of the list with them. I want to be up at the top where we should be. Uh, Florida as a whole is uh, is doing great, but uh, we've got to figure out how to get uh, get ourselves up a little higher as far as the image on that uh, Greater Fort Lauderdale, uh, which is the area we talk about in Broward. Um, you know, we've got to continue to to make it a business friendly environment, and we've got to continue to go after companies like uh, Google to stay here. You know, after that $12.5 billion merger with, uh, with Motorola Mobility, we're trying to keep them here. You know, we're working with the governor and the local... Uh, we don't want to lose those jobs. No, no, we actually want to... We'd like to have Google uh, be a part of uh, Southeast Florida and in Broward County and actually bring more jobs. And we're working with the Alliance and uh, 
uh, Greater Fort Lauderdale Alliance and, and the uh, other economic groups here in Broward County to try to do that with the governor. Now, there was an issue raised at the county about, quote unquote, wage theft. Right. I mean, that doesn't seem to be going in the right direction from what I understand. It, you know, it's not. It's, it's, uh, it's favored right now at, at the commission level. Of course, not by myself, but uh, numerous folks didn't really even know what it was. It Explain came, what it is. Uh, well, it's, it should be really aptly named uh, wage recovery because that's, that's the purpose of it. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it's a process where, you know, I run a business just like you run a business. The last thing I would do is not pay my employee. Pay my, I would pay them before I pay myself. Unfortunately, there are some bad actors out there. The problem is this is not the way to go after it. It's a, it's a, it's a streamlined one-page form that employee can say, hey, my employer did not pay me for these overtime hours on Saturday or whatever the case might be, uh, but you, you're on the hook until you go to either go to a hearing or you just pay it, and most employers are probably going to pay it. Uh, what I have a problem with and what the chamber and other business organizations have a problem with is that there's already uh, a system in place, the Fair Labor Standards Act. Right, there's plenty the of laws in place to protect exactly. employees. Yeah. And we're, we're gathering some numbers as, as to how many have fallen through the cracks. Uh, if there's not a problem there, why overregulate it? You know, that's another reason why we're, you know, 192 on that list. So right. we want to continue to, to raise our, our image. Talk about the six pillars coming out of the Florida Chamber uh, and how they apply to Broward. Okay, uh, well, 67 counties had an opportunity to put forth a, a county model for this uh, strategic planning method that uh, uh, the uh, governor's appointment to the uh, Florida Chamber, the foundation is uh, Dr. Dale Brill, and he's a former uh, uh, Office of Tourism and Economic Development, very smart guy. And uh, he came down for our rollout. We put together our co-chairs. I'm one of them with uh, David Armstrong at Broward College and a few other folks here in town. And we had over 350 to 400 people participate, uh, community uh, folks from the legal and the finance and the uh, construction and government and all the different areas of our community. And it's our plan for the next 20 years. Uh, we are going to be rolling it out uh, next week on the 29th at Broward College uh, Central Campus, and it, it, it's gone extremely well. Can you give us a little snippet as to what, uh, what uh, the well, there's are? Six, six pillars are uh, civic and governance, uh, quality of places, quality of life, basically deals with our education, our businesses, our, our quality of life here in, uh, in uh, Broward County, and it's, uh, it's kind of a revamp of the old Vision Broward, if you will. Uh, but it's an updated and uh, new uh, plan that we're putting in place, and we, you know we have a lot of buy-in, but we want to continue to roll that out through the through the uh, different sectors of our community. So, Commissioner, t uh, close on uh, how do you see the next three or four years for Broward County? What uh, how do we how do we reintroduce uh, some economic vigor and and bring jobs and bring new employ employers to the area? Well. You know, I think what's what's happened as a function, you know, through all, bad comes good, and I think through this bad economy that we've had, uh, some folks who may have not been uh, as fiscally uh, responsible or conservative, if you will, uh, in the past have been voting for and supporting uh, making some much-needed cuts. Not popular cuts, but much-needed cuts. And, you know, through that time, I think everybody has, has gotten to the point where, all right, well, we've, we've, uh, we've kept the millage rate low. A lot of the cities are are doing the same thing, but we have to continue to, to do that through the good times. You know, as, as things start to increase and jobs come back, that's not a time to, to start taxing again. It's not a time to start regulating again. We need to completely keep this process open so in good and bad times, people understand that the, you know, both the government and uh, education and everything else that's uh, here in Broward County, everything that's, that's setting policy uh, is making it a welcome place to bring your business and, and hire people. Well, I appreciate that, and thank you again for the time. Commissioner Chip Lamarca, thank you. Lamarca, thank you.